But speaking of domestic terrorism, we would be remiss if we did not begin with a story about police. But this isn't just a story about police. This is another installment of Burn It Down with Kim Brown's Cops Ain't Shit edition. And the spotlight today is going to be on the capital city of Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Shout out to all my Ohio winds out there. Shout out to all the Leverts <laughs> and Boosie Collins and them's uh, relatives. And shout out to Bone Thugs and Harmony. And shout out to Ray Cash. And shout out to Halle Berry. And shout out to Jane Kennedy. All the famous black Ohioans. We love Ohio. Ohio is where it's at. Uh, Cincinnati, Cleveland, uh, beautiful, beautiful places. Uh, but Columbus. The police, the police go a little hard in Columbus, right? And 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 it's it's disturbing the the lengths of hard <laughs> that the Columbus police go. Um, but before we could even really get into talking about Columbus police, we actually have to take a step back and talk about public safety in Ohio, right? As many of us may know, or some of us may not know, that Ohio might be ground zero for the big opioid crisis. We know New England has been hit very hard with the opioid crisis. We know uh, lots of places around America have been hit very hard by the opioid crisis. Uh, Tuna, if you could pop up that, that first article for me, I believe it's A1. Um, guys, the opioid crisis is tremendous in Ohio. And, this, and the reason I'm leading off with this is just an example of how Police do not keep us safe, right? And when it comes to the basic elements of public safety, police absolutely do not keep us safe. So this piece that we're looking at right here, this is from the Ohio Capital Journal, and this was published this summer. This is uh, actually published on July 6th. Lead sentence, everybody. At least 5,215 Ohioans fatally overdosed on drugs last year. Let me run that back for y'all. 5,215 people in one state, the state of Ohio, fatally overdosed on drugs last year in one year. According to a new government data, um, this is nearly a 22% increase over 2019 numbers, okay? So the state of Ohio was already in a, a calamitous condition when it comes to opioid overdoses however um and we know 2020 with the pandemic made things worse it was already bad so this data which is uh, released wednesday by the national center for health statistics shows that ohio was uh that the ohio uptick was much more modest than the national rate but more than 95,000 americans part of me 93,000 americans fatally overdosed in 2020 but the 2020 data reverses what was uh, a, a promising trend, instead of decreasing drug overdoses in Ohio, they actually went up, like I said, 22% in one year. Over 5,000 Ohioans died as a result of opioid fatal overdoses or related opioid overdoses, right? So keep that in mind, right? Keep that, hold, hold that statistic very close in your head. Tunde, if you could, my brother, pop up for me a two. So, one would think that with the opioid crisis being what it was, um, that police, police <laughs> might be interested in ending the opioid epidemic, right? That is what I guess our, our social conditioning reasoning would teach us, right? But our logical common sense seeing the world not through rose colored lenses understands that chances are that the reasons why the opioid epidemic is so bad in Ohio, because there's a very good chance that the police themselves are pushing these opioids, right? Right? Uh, CIA in the 80s, crack epidemic, anybody, right? This is not unusual. Gun Trace Task Force in Baltimore City, anybody? Yes, the police sell drugs every fucking where, all the time and twice on Sundays. But the police in Columbus, show they. When I say these niggas went hard, <laughs> they said, no, 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 no. We understand that the state is dealing with an opioid uh, uh, crisis here. We understand that over 5,000 people died in the state in one year. Uh, we understand that. But our response is to, you know what, let's sell all the drugs. Tunde, if we could please look at A2. 
before we get to Lacey, we do want to show you this video. Look at this. This is just coming into the 10 TV newsroom. It shows one of those Columbus police officers getting booked at the Delaware County Jail. John Kaczkowski will make a first appearance in court today virtually. All right, let's get to Lacey. She has more on what the Department of Justice is saying all about this. Lacey, lots of developments happening with this right now. Yeah, and we've just gotten the documents. It says the two narcotics officers are accused of being involved in the sale and distribution of about seven and a half kilograms of fentanyl. Now, the reports also say that those officers are accused of taking money to provide security for the cartel while transporting drugs. Now, the FBI says in the court records they have recorded conversations between the two officers and an undercover informant. The officers, 33-year-old John Kaczkowski and 44-year-old Marco Marino, were arrested yesterday and taken into federal custody. Attend TV cameras were there as the FBI agents took evidence from Marino's home. Now, according to unsealed court documents, Kaczkowski told Marino if he ever told anyone about their illegal activity, he would have his wife and kids killed. Now, the Fraternal Order of Police said in a statement, if these allegations are true, these individuals have no place in the Fraternal Order of Police or the Columbus Division of Police. Now, the DOJ confirms to me that Marino was arrested yesterday at the airport. Now, Marino is scheduled for a court hearing tomorrow. Kaczkowski will be in court this afternoon. Reporting live, Lacey Crisp, 10 TV News. Shirley, we need you to keep up, mama. Did she say the cops were selling drugs? Baby, the cops were selling kilos of fentanyl. Fentanyl, the shit that exclusively kills you. Fentanyl don't do nothing but kill. You can't even have a nice fun high <laughs> of fentanyl. No, 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 no. Uh, the commercial that they're running around the DMV is at like two grams, like not, not even two grams, two grains of salt worth of fentanyl is enough to kill a person. The cops was pushing eight keys they had eight kilograms eight kilograms of fentanyl right um and again these are federal charges that these that these police are facing they were narcotics <laughs> police oh the irony and uh the one the younger one marino they caught him at the airport <laughs> marino said i'm getting the fuck out of town uh according to the department of justice documents is that uh they they the younger one the Mar Mar marino the 33 year old uh uh officer that is alleged to have been selling these kilos of fentanyl uh, he was actually trying to figure out how to get citizenship in Mexico, allegedly trying to figure out how to buy properties in Mexico in order to launder all this money. Uh, so what it seems is though Marino perhaps was the junior officer in this operation and the gentleman with the multisyllabic last name, <laughs> whom, whom I'm not going to try to pronounce around that right now. Uh, he was in charge, as you heard in the report. The older white officer told the younger Latinx cop that, hey, if you tell anybody about this, I'm going to kill your whole family, right? Okay, <laughs> way, to, way to go there, police. Way to keep the community safe. Um, um, and so that, that, that's just a small example, right? I, I know, Shirley, I'm here with you, baby. We here to keep up. What's up with you, Liu Kang? What's up? What's up? Who else we got up in here? We got everybody up in here. Hello, Melody. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so happy to see y'all. Of course, Chuck Kev and everybody else. We got a Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Listen, abolition is the only answer because you know what? You can't reform that, okay? Um, so, but wait, wait. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not finished. I'm not finished with Columbus police because as I said, Ohioans would tell you that Columbus police have a notorious, terrible reputation. When I was doing my research for this, I found stories literally going back many, many years about accusations of um, excessive force and unjustified killings by the uh, uh, Columbus police. For example, not that this matters, <laughs> but uh, there was an ATF agent who actually filed a lawsuit uh, against the Columbus police for allegations of use of a uh, de- uh, 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 excessive force against them, right? The ATF agent got tased by the police themselves. Now, not that we give a fuck about that, but here's what we do give a fuck about, okay? So for a long time, Columbus police have just been going about their community policing completely unfettered, unchecked, unruly, out of control. But that somewhat got tiny bit yoked back they leashed them up a tiny bit and yanked that leash up a little bit 
after 2020 and the protests that happened in Columbus um, about the murder of George Floyd. Now, if you've been watching Burn It Down with Kim Brown the whole time, or even if you even go back with us to stir crazy days, uh, we was all over that shit, okay? A congresswoman representing that area, her name was Joyce Beatty, a black woman, was out at the Justice for George Floyd protest in Columbus and got pepper sprayed in the face by the cops, right? Cops did not give a fuck that this was a sitting member of Congress. They didn't give a shit. And they also pepper sprayed some other notable elected elected officials, I believe, including the president of the Columbus City Council, um, who I think is also a black person, possibly even a black woman. I'm trying to rely off my my shady fucking memory here, y'all. But Columbus has been going hard in terms of their police. I want us to take a look, if we could, today at A3, because um, the actions of the Columbus police were so egregious during the year 2020, they actually had to be collected by a federal judge, right? And in the federal judge's ruling regarding this force, uh, this use of force lawsuit against um, protesters, the, 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 the judge does a good job of laying it out. But again, the expectation from this ruling is that police will eventually police themselves. And we know that they are incapable of doing that. But I think that the, the, the judge's decision, at least their words, Hopefully we'll have some impact, but I'll let you guys decide that. Tune in, if we could please take a look at A3. You guys, this clip is courtesy of NBC4 Columbus. A federal judge says Columbus police ran amok last year when responding to demonstrations regarding racial injustice. Now he is ordering the division to change its tactics. The federal court order handed down today favors 26 protesters who have claims of police brutality. Good evening to you, everybody, and thanks for being with us. I'm Carrie Charles. I'm Colleen Marshall. NBC4 was the first on air and online to give you details. This is it, the chief judge's 88-page decision. Now, it bars the use of tear gas, pepper spray, or wooden bullets against nonviolent protesters. The judge says the unrest that followed the murder of George Floyd proved to be a tragic flashpoint between the COVID-19 pandemic and deep-seated racism. And in his courtroom, Room. He had the video evidence of what resulted here, an excessive use of force against peaceful protesters. Passive, non-resistant protesters, some with hands up, some walking away or obeying orders to disperse, nonetheless shoved, hit, pepper sprayed by police. In his order, Judge Marbley calls it a sad tale of police officers, clothed with the awesome power of the state, run amok. I hope people read it, he, especially his, it, it just, it's very thoughtful and it has some historical perspective. That's Attorney all. Fred Giddes represented some of the 26 plaintiffs, including Alita Mixon, who was pepper sprayed, shoved, and had her knee broken when an officer stepped on her leg after she asked police for help finding her daughter. Gitta says the decision opens a window of hope. Start holding police officers accountable. Something Judge Marbley says has not happened yet. He concludes that even though the mayor and then Chief Quinlan admitted officers' video recorded conduct was improper, there have been zero reports by officers of excessive force by others during the protests zero disciplinary actions or criminal charges for excessive force, and zero efforts to relieve violent officers from duty. He wants officers essentially to tell on each other. Well, they have a duty to do that. That's the officer's job. It's not telling on them. It's the uh, one officer doing their duty with respect to an officer that is breaking the law. Congresswoman Joyce Beatty was not part of the lawsuit. Uh, as you know, I was there in a peaceful protest. But she was pepper sprayed last summer and she has seen the video evidence in this case. We hear too many police officers chanting and celebrating and bragging about doing things that we know should have never happened, whether that's pulling a mask off to someone and pepper spraying them or a female asking for assistance to find her daughter or me saying this is not right that we are using bicycles and, as shields and pushing people to the ground and pepper spraying them. Now we've got a problem. It has not been fixed and it won't be fixed if we just leave it to the division of police. 
But Giddes says now this court order is in place and officers or supervisors who ignore it will have to answer to a federal judge. Judge Algernon Marbley limits the use of non-lethal force on peaceful protesters, orders police to ensure body and vehicle cameras are on and working, prohibits the infliction of pain to deter non-violent protesters, and even protects the rights of reporters to be present and record the protests. So that was from NBC for Columbus, and that was from uh, earlier this year. However, in that report, uh, some things have already been updated. There have been three Columbus police who are charged in connection to uh, excessive force charges related to the protests of 2020, but they are all charged with misdemeanors. They're charged with misdemeanors. Y'all heard they broke a woman's leg. <laughs> and the cop said, you know, we're just gonna give them some misdemeanors. What, some misdemeanors. Yep, they're facing uh, three misdemeanor counts of assault, uh, dereliction of duty, three counts of interference with civil rights. How the fuck are these misdemeanors yo um yep so um so there's that so out of all the unruliness shown by columbus police or the division of law enforcement whatever they call it officially there in columbus ohio despite the the unconstitutional unruly behavior by the police only three have been charged in connection with assaulting protesters during 2020 despite the fact that a sitting congressperson not to say that you got to treat her nicer than everybody else but you would think <laughs> that just perhaps and maybe that they may not want to pepper spray the lady congressperson in the face but she's black so we know how 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 that goes right but columbus police everybody uh i believe that they are still under i'm not I, I don't think that they have officially come under consent decree by department of justice molly if you're able could you <laughs> could you google that for me i don't think that they are officially under a consent decree but here's the thing about consent decree guys anytime that uh, uh the department of justice like steps into the podium and they have a nice con press conference and they talking about you know all these egregious actions by a a a a, 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 a local police department and and we're going to step in and have a consent decree and then there's going to be federal oversight. Let me explain something to you, Chief. 2015, Baltimore City indicated to me that those consent decrees are not worth the paper that you could wipe your ass with. OK, the federal investigators from the Department of Justice were doing ride alongs with Baltimore City Police as they were doing illegal shit <laughs> and doing illegal shit in front of the federal investigators and the federal investigators were just documenting it right they didn't step in <laughs> they didn't tell them to stop they didn't tell them to stop violating people's civil rights they didn't tell them to stop doing any of that shit they just wrote it down they just took notes right and so when the consent decree came out and was released it was all this clamor from the elected officials and from the police leadership that we're going to get our house in order and let me assure you some seven years later six to seven years later after the department of justice consent decree against baltimore city police i assure you <laughs> baltimore city police are out here doing as much fuckery as they was six to seven years ago so all them consent decrees don't do nothing except document the problem which i guess to a point is needed uh but call it what it is say that you write in a report <laughs> don't say that you're stepping in to intercede in trying to rein in the behavior of the police of this police department because that's that's not what you're going to do and the fact that this federal judge's ruling itemized uh, to me a, a good list of things that the police need to adhere to who is going to enforce that right portland oregon raise your hand if it was decreed last year that portland police were not to use rubber bullets or tear gas against protesters and what did the portland police do after such a decree they went out in the streets and immediately used rubber bullets and tear gas against protesters. Same thing in Washington, D.C. Mario Bowser, the mayor, said no more tear gas and pepper spray. And what did Metropolitan Police do? They went out and bought all new, <laughs> new and improved. They got the 2022 tear gas ready to go, uh, ready to go. So the criminal injustice system, again, is, is there to notate when the police do egregious constitutional violations and little else unless you're actually going to prosecute these cops for significant things and it, it, again it has to be prosecutions and you lose your job like it can't just be officer friendly got fired 
after he ran people over or broke a protester's leg. No, like it has to be officer friendly got fired and officer friendly has been charged. Those three police officers in Columbus who have been charged with misdemeanors in connection to the assaults of protesters in 2020, they also have their jobs. Okay. So there's a very good chance that they could easily uh, re- re- return to duty and be out here doing the same shit because so much of this relies upon police and in, in, in like the lawyer said, to say it's informing upon themselves, I mean, that is exactly how they view it, right? Um, but if you're going to stand by while your fellow officer is assaulting people, assaulting people who are walking away, assaulting people who are complying with orders, or even things way more egregious than that, sexual harassment and assault and or maybe selling a few kilos of fentanyl. I mean, who can really say? <laughs> but, you know, if if the cop who is standing by and watching the so-called bad cop commit these crimes and, and, and nefarious acts, then the cop who is uh, being, being the observer is also ain't shit relative to the one who is actively doing the, 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 the criminal act, right? Um, equally ain't shit, because if you're not going to get rid of them, then basically you're enabling their behavior. And when you enable that kind of behavior, you're saying that the, 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 the person is internalizing that like, oh, okay, I can keep doing this. Let me see if I can go ahead and do a little bit more. Let me see if I can do a little bit more. And circling back to the officers who have been charged, the narcotics cops who have been in charge with selling the kilos of fentanyl, y'all, that's just, that's just the, 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 the stash that they knew about, right? How many more kilograms of fentanyl are these two officers responsible for bringing into the state of Ohio? Is it just fentanyl that they're responsible for bringing? Have they been trafficking other drugs? I mean, these guys were full on employees of the cartel. Let the let the Department of Justice tell it. They've been probably running drugs for a long time. A lot of drugs, a lot of drugs. So just be clear, y'all, the war on drugs is, was, and always a farce. It was a means to an end in order to incarcerate black and brown people for shit that white people walk away scot-free for, right? And the shit that basically, you know, it's, it's that white economic money <laughs> that, that is the main engine behind the drug trade, right? I'm sure we was, we was, we was, we was responsible for some weed being brought in here. Yes. <laughs> uh, but that cocaine train, that cocaine train, well, that cocaine train went a lot of places, did it not? That cocaine train was going to Wall Street and that cocaine train was going to Southeast DC <laughs> and that cocaine train was going a lot of places, a lot of places. Uh, but you know, we, we know who it is that there was always the intended targets of the war on drugs. And again, the war on drugs was never a war that the United States government ever intended to win. It was a war on knuckles and it was a war on Afro knuckles. <laughs> it was a war. It was a war on non-whites all day. And, and what happens uh, when, when you allow the police to police themselves is what, for one, they don't police themselves. They allow themselves to run amok. Uh, they allow themselves to sell drugs. They allow themselves to become uh, menaces to society in the communities in which they are supposed to serve. And most importantly, guys, I mean, there are missing women and girls, missing black women and girls, missing trans uh, black women and girls out of Columbus who who are not found. Right. Um, and I, I wanted to say their names and hold on, let me, I, and I, this is, I, let me apologize. Cause I, this is something I totally meant to put on my dock and I did not do that. And I'm very disappointed in myself, uh, for not doing that, but kind of circling back to what other people have been talking about. And now that has become a story since uh, the disappearance and subsequent murder of Gabby Petito, that it seems as though a lot of these news agencies are trying to report uh, missing and murdered uh, indigenous women and black women more since they got caught out on their bullshit. Um, and, and one of the ways in which police continue to fail the community is when they don't come looking for us, right? Oh, and let me also not forget that it was Columbus police who shot and killed Micaiah Bryant, seven, well, 16 year old who would have turned 17 uh, this week, who shot her outside of her home while she was wielding a knife in a stand your ground state in the state of Ohio. Uh, that young woman, Micaiah Bryant had every right 
to stand her ground if she thought that her life was threatened and the police came and shot her on sight um, and, and made no attempt to disarm her or um, and, and the police actually endangered the lives of lots of other people by shooting in a situation where there was others around and he, he could have missed her. So, uh, but I wanted to mention uh, Lachey Dungy, 19 year old missing black girl from Columbus, Ohio. Um, hold on, I'm gonna put this up real quick. I think you guys should be able to see this. Can you see this? That's her picture posted by her people on Twitter, Lachey Dungy, 19 years old, missing from Columbus, Ohio. And there's another woman's name um, that I wanted to say as well. Yes, Sequoia Cooper. Okay, this is the black trans woman, 33 years old, has been missing from Columbus since August 31st of 2021. Black trans woman. There are news articles about her disappearance, but they all include her dead name. So, um, absolutely, we do not want to dead name our, our trans brothers and sisters. And this is Sequoia. I think you guys should be able to see that. Let me know if that's not seeable today, but that's Sequoia. So Columbus police are terrorizing the community. They are selling drugs in the community. And they are not trying to find our, our, our missing and possibly murdered black women. So that's how Columbus police cops ain't shit. <laughs> Brought to you today by Burn It Down with Kim Brown.